Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the RDX L1 Mark Pro cheek protector headgear. So check it out. All right, you guys, today I'm doing a review of the RDX L1 Mark Pro Cheek Protector Headgear. I got mine in size medium. Uh, this is a synthetic leather headgear. They call it Super Skin. Uh, really similar to like what Rival uses and calls their microfiber. Um, this has the RDX logo on the front of the forehead, so it's $19.99, RDX handmade. Um, these are designed in the UK, and I believe they're manufactured in the same place their gloves are, which is in Pakistan. Uh, you have a bunch of tags here that has like uh, authenticity info, sizing. You also have a, a code there you can scan, track tag. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because it ends up sticking out of the crown of the headgear, so I'm going to end up ripping that out. Um, I feel like they should have just left that tag separate in the box rather than having it connected to the headgear just because that's so much right there. Uh, so you can see the super skin material is definitely on the higher end when it comes to the, the quality of the synthetic with this. You have the RDX that comes up to the side of the temple and kind of raises towards the back at a horizontal design, uh, or should I say horizontal angle. Uh, it says RDX there in black. It says Mark Series on the cheek protector. Uh, the cheek guards are about an inch to an inch and a quarter in thickness. Uh, pretty firm density foam padding, and it's the same throughout the entire headgear in terms of the thickness and the padding that they use. Uh, one thing I do note is that in the forehead section of the headgear, um, the inside is a little softer, so it gives you a little bit more comfort, which is probably one of the best features of this headgear is the liner they use in here. is a tri uh liner, which is nice and smooth, doesn't bunch up, and does a good job of preventing this headgear from slipping around, but at the same time being comfortable. Um, but it's definitely on the softer side. And then you'll notice at the very end of the tips of the inside of the cheek, it has the same microfiber material right there as well. Um, the chin strap is a standard Velcro chin strap that goes in through this uh, D-ring right here, which is metal, but then it has this little flap right here, as well as one on the inside. That, that way you don't have this metal touching against your, 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 uh, your chin. So you have this little flap right here, which is about a quarter of an inch in thickness. Uh, I do wish it was a quick clip system rather than the Velcro, but it is what it is. Um, again, RDX, the ear protection on the side of the head, the eardrum protection, uh, this is just a, a piece of that synthetic material that crosses over, um, but you're, you're looking at probably about an inch and a half of uh, firm density foam padding that wraps around your ear. Uh, and protects your eardrum as well as any kind of uh, blows from the side of the head and then the side of the head as well uh, you're looking at about an inch to an inch a quarter of padding on the side of the head so all the way from the back top part of the crown that kind of comes down towards the lower part of your cheek and your chin or your jawline towards the front right there and then obviously the stuff towards your forehead you also have this little crown piece that comes up higher that's about a quarter of inch a padding right there and then you also have the crown lace-up system which is pretty standard that you would see in most headgears and then um, on the back you have a velcro strap system so it has a pad of about an inch in thickness for the back of the head and a tapered neck uh, with the velcro adjustment right there so there you have it let me go ahead and put this on the scale see how much this headgear weighs that way you guys have an idea of the weight of it it definitely feels a little bit on the heavier side, but we'll see if I'm if I'm right about that. So the headgear is right at 15.2 ounces, so a little bit on the heavier side, but nothing you know nothing out of the ordinary. 15.2, 15.3 ounces. So let's go ahead and do the review. Hey, what's up, guys? Carlo here, and today I'm doing a review on the RDX L1 Mark Pro Cheek Protector Headgear. Got mine in the black and gold colorway. You can also get it in black and silver. And I got mine in medium. Um, it has small, medium, larger XL. You can go onto the RDX website to see which one is the correct size for you based on um, your head circumference. Now, this is uh, RDX is one of their more higher end cheek protector style headgears. 
Um, I did a review on their Mark Pro boxing gloves. They were really solid gloves. So I was really interested to see how this headgear would pan out when I use it during sparring. Um, I think it's a really nice looking headgear, probably uh, one of their more attractive looking headgears. I like the fact that they integrated the cheek protectors in there. That way you have uh, protection over your cheek and your orbital bone. That way you don't get any kinds of cuts or uh, reduce the bruising and the swelling that you typically get when you go into sparring. Um, so I was interested in the fact, uh, especially at the price point of $109, it's a relatively good price, especially when you're looking at what else is out there. Um, it does utilize a, a synthetic outside casing, which is considered to be uh, what they call their super skin. So very similar to like what other companies are starting to go towards now with the synthetics like uh, Rival does with their microfiber, Onyx, X, Onyx uses it in their X Factor, their own version of their own um, synthetic. So um, the synthetic they use with RDX on their super skin is the same they use in their gloves. It's actually really durable. It has a nice thicker feel to it. It has a much more premium feel and has really good longevity in terms of um, comparing it to some of the older uh, synthetics that you see in some gloves like the Everlast uh, Pro Style Elite, which are thinner and they don't do so well when you introduce heat and moisture to that. Uh, with this, this definitely does a lot better. Now looking at the, the headgear itself, it's actually pretty nice looking. I like the fact that uh, inside the super skin, they have kind of like this triangular design on the forehead portion and the temple of the headgear. You have the RDX logo right there, RDX diagonally on the back, uh, towards the back and diagonally down on the side of the head, coming down to where your eyes are at. You also have the cheek protectors right there. As far as the thickness of padding, you have about an inch, maybe to an inch and a quarter, just depending on what portion of the headgear you're looking at, um, all in all, which is nice and solid and firm on the exterior. Uh, but the inside foam that is butted up against your head and your skin is much softer. And you also have that really smooth tricot liner, which I'm a big fan of. So I like the fact that you have a good amount of padding, but it's not overdone. Um, I did a review on the RDX Face Saver a couple of months ago. And that thing was just ridiculously huge. I was not a fan of that headgear whatsoever. I thought you actually got hit more using that headgear than it did uh, protecting you. So I, I feel like this proportion-wise is, is the proper size. Um, if I were to compare it to any headgear I've tried in the past, it really reminds me about the rival RHG20 headgear, but I think it's better than that one. I think that the fit and the finish is better than the RHG20. Um, you have the eardrum protection right here, which is padded again about an inch inch and a quarter of the padding. You also have that crossbar right there and an open hole so you can hear. And uh, on the back, you also have about an inch to an inch and a half of uh, padding on the back of the head to protect the back of your head if you were to fall or to get hit in the back of the head. You also have the lace-up crown adjustment. I'm always a big fan of lace-ups on the crown. As well as on the back, back closure, I would have loved to see laces rather than Velcro just because I, I feel it gives a much more custom and tighter fit. And then Showing you guys the Velcro strap. It's pretty standard. You have uh, the pad right here that you can adjust that has Velcro on it as well. And then from there, you can adjust the horizontal uh, adjustment with the, the Velcro on the back as well. One thing you notice is they like to put a lot of tags on their gear. You know, they have like this QR code that you can scan for registration, authenticity, sizing. I feel like this uh, tag should have been removed and maybe like. Um, pushed in with a piece of plastic that you can clip off and then just keep that on the side because this is just kind of a pain in the butt. It ends up kind of like doing one of those and sticking out um, and just kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to end up tearing that off. Um, so you can see that overall, a really clean looking headgear. It says Mark Series on that side, um, Super Skin on that side as well. Um, let's go ahead and put this on so you guys can see how it fits. So I already pre adjusted the top crown portion, so that's all the right height as well as the back Velcro strap is the correct size in terms of the horizontal adjustment. And then the upper adjustment for the crown on my head is at the perfect size. So I haven't put on the Velcro um, chin strap yet, but you guys can see the proportions of it. Um, the cheek protectors uh, come in. I feel like once this is all um, pushed together, obviously you're not gonna have the most opti optimal nose protection. And I tell people this all the time. If you get a cheek protector style headgear, you will get punched in the nose. It's just a matter of time, not a matter of if, of if. The whole point of having this is to give you um, better you know, visibility than like a full-on um, face saver headgear where it has a bar in the front so you can still see like uppercuts and any kind of punches that are coming from a lower trajectory and coming upwards. Um, but at the same time, if you're over to clash heads with your sparring partner, then at least you won't do any damage 
um, to your orbital bone or cause any cuts or abrasions around your eyes in this area, that's really important. So my vis visibility with this feels really good. I feel like I have a good field of vision when I'm able to look around, you know, whether I'm looking side to side, if I'm kind of crouched down and ducking, maybe I'm weaving underneath the shot and I'm kind of looking upwards towards my opponent to try to set something up. I still feel like this is not too far down and I can see upwards and the cheeks don't get in the way of my field of vision as well. So that's really nice. Uh, the Velcro strap, you can see just basically goes in through the metal loop. And you also have this piece, this piece right here that comes out on that side. And that's pretty much it. So you adjust that, put that on. Um, out of all the shin strap closures, I do like this second best. My first choice would be um, the quick clip that you just clip right in and you can press to unclip it. Second choice would be this one, and the third choice would be the, the buckle with the little metal, like a, like a buckle that you would find on your belt with the little holes in it. I'm not a fan of that just because it takes forever, and finding, trying to find the hole when you're doing it is kind of a pain in the butt, so I do like this. The position of the chin strap is perfect. It's right underneath the chin. It's not too far back against my neck. Sometimes you get it way too far back, and it kind of bunch, butts up against your Adam's apple, and that really causes a lot of discomfort, but it's in the perfect spot. Cheek protectors aren't too big. Um, and they're not overcrowding. Sometimes you get oversized cheek protector uh, pads and they kind of like push up against your nostrils like that and you don't get that. Obviously, to me, this is like the perfect headgear when it comes to cheek protection. Good field of vision, protects your cheeks, chin straps on the right spot. Um, the ergonomics and dimensions of it is perfect. My ears are right where they need to be at. So the sizing is perfect right there. Go into the back of my head. You can see that I have good flexibility. I can rotate my head around without any restriction. The side right here is perfect in terms of sizing for my ears. And overall, when I would take punches and shots with this headgear, I mean, I would feel it like I would with any other headgear. I couldn't really tell the difference if this absorbed the power more than others, because I feel like if somebody punches you hard, regardless of what kind of headgear you're wearing, you're gonna feel the shock of the punch. But I did feel the comfort of it. So to me, the, the biggest thing is the comfort and the visibility. I felt like I was able to, to see shots coming, I could set things up, both defensively and offensively. Um, and I didn't feel like the headgear was a hindrance to my training on my sparring, um, which is uh, the most important thing is that you feel that you can still wear this headgear and it almost like becomes part of your body. You're not thinking about it. So I definitely like this headgear. Um, the, you know, the price point of $109, I think it's right about there. I think it's a good price. The quality is really solid. The liner is great. It doesn't move around, especially when I start to sweat. Sometimes you get headgears that have the leather on the inside and they just shift around too much with this. Um, I didn't have that issue. The chin feels good as well. So overall, I'm really sad, uh, satisfied with this headgear. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find this RDX L1 Mark Pro headgear. I'll see you guys later. Take care.